Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. So starting the presser a little bit late. Uh, but it's good that you are all here. Countrymen and women, as senior members of the party, and all part officials present here, I say thank you very much for responding at short notice, and also our very special fourth estate members of the press. Please note that this is the first time I am holding a comprehensive press event to address a number of issues since my release from incarceration. Firstly, allow me to thank the sixth Republican president and our party president, Mr. Edgar Chagwalungu, for the support and prayers he gave while I was in prison. Members of Central Committee who abandoned their daily work to make it a daily routine to visit me and make sure that I had my daily provisions and also to the part officials who camped at prison uh, during the time that I was in incarceration. I wish to thank the church who visited me and prayed for us political party leaders from other political parties, the international community, diplomats who sent messages of solidarity, and some visit, who visited to give a message of goodwill. Lastly, the prison authority who were highly professional despite heavy pressure from community house, your day, I must promise, is coming. Hanging there, as they say, panono panono to Africa. We will definitely arrive at where God has ordained the patriotic front to arrive. Since the time I was in incarcerated, there were a number of issues that took place that I also want to address today. We must discuss these issues honestly fairly because Zambia is at a crossroad. We are in a political crisis as a country. A total breakdown in the rule of law. We are in a, a semblance of a state of emergency. And it's at times like this when we must have a unit of purpose among all of us Zambians, all of us members of Patriotic Front, and all of us members of the Opposition Front. For the first time since colonialism, we now have two classes of citizens. Others can do anything and it's okay. When others do the very thing, same thing, the law will be abused and meted out selectively against them. Others are allowed to practice tribalism, while those who speak against it are detained. I repeat, we have two classes of citizens. One is superior, and one is nothing. But remember, once you are out of power, UPND, Misaka and HLM, remember, once you are out of power, this cycle repeats itself. 
Because you are sowing a bad seed, my dear brother, Hakainde Chilema. In this press briefing, I want to focus to discuss the following issues. One, the abduction and detention of Honorable J.J. Banda. Two, evidence of hate speech and proposing tribal war in UPND. Three, mistreatment and persecution and harassment of the sixth president of the Republic of Zambia, Dr. Isiao. Let me start with the abduction of Honorable J. J. Banda. The abduction and disappearance of Honorable J. J. Banda in the recent weeks is a criminal script drawn and acted by professional actors. The act is unusual and not normal in Zambian society. We have many questions as to why the Zambia police has failed to give a comprehensive report up to now on suspected culprits involved so far. How can a lawmaker, a member of parliament, be abducted and found and later weeks the police have not made any sensible progress report to the nation. As PF, we have many questions and suspicions about this silence on this important matter that is of public interest. How did Mr. Akainde Chirema release State House Special Forces accompanied by a minister the Minister of Home Affairs to go and airlift someone who was abducted at a healthy facility. Why has Zambia police failed to clarify and explain anything related to the abduction of Honorable Banda? The state has more to explain to the public on the disappearance and reappearance of JJ Banda, which has left the country and neighboring countries in shock at his this amarish, amateurish embarrassing embarrassment on President Aka in the HLM. And you could tell his, that embarrassment when he had a press briefing himself. The anger that he was exerting, expressing when he was speaking, calling a parliamentarian a thug, and the president himself wanting to First of all, become the police himself, become the prosecutor and the judge at the same time. Saying that, no, there are cases we need to, to you know, uh, revisit. Ms. Alka Indechrema is speaking, just like all UPND members, from a place of guilt. They accuse the patriotic front based on what they are guilt of themselves. Because they have been shielding their members and cadres and their thugs whenever they commit crimes, they want to assume that that is what Patriotic Front did when it came to their members. In PF, anyone who was found wanting with the law, nobody interfered. J.J. Banda, when he was found wanting with the law in Vubui, some members in Patriotic Front were even accusing the President, Home Affairs Minister, and others to say they are working against the party by allowing JJ to go through the due process. But the President said, I will not tolerate criminality of whatever form in my party. JJ may be a leader, but he will be arrested. He will go to court. He was found wanting in Bubu before the Magistrate Court, and he was fined for that you know, um, conduct that was against the law. When JJ again was found wanting, when he misconducted himself at the police, nobody interfered. The police arrested him with his colleagues. It went up to the high court. He was found wanting and was fined 150,000 kwacha. And his colleague who actually assaulted the, the police officer was actually committed to prison by he was convicted and sentenced to one year in prison. So to suggest that possibly J.J. was shielded or anybody in PF was shielded if they were found wanting in terms of the law, 
That's a misapplication of reality or the truth, a misrepresentation of the truth. That is what the UPND are guilty of. The questions we have is that what happened to those who were involved in the murder of Congo? How come witnesses were abducted and up to today do not have answers around the death of Congo? They are guilty, and that's how come today they want to point fingers to patriotic front. But uh, lies have short legs. The truth will always catch up. Like I said, the state has more explanation to the public on the, to make to the public on the disappearance and reappearance of JJ, which has left the country and neighboring countries, like I said, wandering. The brutal and forceful removal of JJ Branda from Midlands Hospital, a medical facility chosen by himself and the family to Marinasoko Hospital, military hospital, was against his rights to choose medi a medical facility of his choice as a Zambian. The act was both unconstitutional and indeed another version of J.J. Banda's abduction now by the state themselves. How can a normal transfer of a lawmaker from a private hospital to a public hospital involve more than 70 uniformed officers and uninformed officers, armed police officers for that matter, and the Minister of Home Affairs, present from midnight, Jack Mwimbu must explain and justify this barbaric act against a non-parliamentarian. Our suspicion of European thugs involvement in the abduction of JJ is very strong. We have factual evidence about it. UPND National Youth Chairman Gilbert Riswaniso is on record to have politically warned JJ via his Facebook page that where he said, Petauke seat is next. Under the circumstance of this abduction, we in PF become interested in Gilbert Riswaniso's statement and may not be far from concluding that Banda was a victim of that political warning. Why is the police not taking keen interest in Gilbert Sonso's you know, statement based on his own you know, uh, pronouncement warning on the Petauke lawmaker? The most sensible prime suspect in the abduction of Honorable J.J. Banda is Livingstone-based UPND member Mr. Philip Musela. UPND Livingston District Youth Chairman for Politics and Security. Musela is on video clearly warning the former president, the sixth president, Dr. Edgar Chagalungu, and in particular, Nubo J.J. Banda, to behave or be sorted out within six months. Here we are. The abduction of J.J. Banda was within six months of UPND's warning. We also have a non councillor purporting to be a youth under Bruce Kanema in northwestern province. Another UPND leader, a few weeks ago, he had a press briefing or conference where he openly wanted to kill and slaughter the sixth you know, president, President Edgar Chagalungo, and all his close minions if they continue doing politics. Honorable JJ Banda. He is perceived to be very close to the former president and has in the recent past been publicly moving with President ECL in the Eastern Province, on the Copper Belt, and in Central Province. With all these UPND leaders issuing direct threats on Honorable Banda's life, we are shocked as PF and most Zambians that the police have not taken interest in their investigations to interrogate all these thugs who are prime suspects. Instead, from the president to the list, they are proposing to have one who was abducted, a victim, to be arrested. They are actually picking him from his hospital bed every now and then to the police to go and try and have him arrested. And they are proposing charges 
that are unbearable because of the attempt to have his mouth shut. But you can't shut the mouth of uh, the Zambians. You may shut the mouth of uh, uh, JJ Banda, but the Zambians will still speak for him because Zambians are not stupid. Honorable Banda was abducted to be killed by his abductors and not to leave him alive. That purported note in his car apologized to, Zamb to Zambians was uh, manufactured by his abducted, abductors. Had Zambian taken the disappearance of Honorable Banda light, lightly, today would have been mourning the Petauke member of parliament. It's the gallant voices of Honorable Munia Zulu, Lumezi MP, the gallant voices of Honorable Maureen Mabonga, Mfue MP, the gallant voices of Madam Edith Nawaki, FDD President, the gallant voices of Mr. Brett Nachangala, political ad activist, and many others who saved the, the life of Honorable Banda. Although our gallant friends were whistleblowers, they were instead maliciously arrested and charged, later detained, on what they called hate speech, espionage, and proposing tribal war. We must all stand up to salute them as lifesavers. They are now obviously chained in courts with trumped up charges for saving Honorable Banda's life. A mark of absolute guarantee. And we all forever are indebted to them for saving JJ's life. Lastly, on this issue, as PF, we challenge President HH to say something about his two state house advisors who have been mentioned by Honorable JJ's lawyers that they were behind this abduction. Ironically, <laughs> Mr. Aka in the HLM, in a mark of desperation, <laughs> held another message to, you know, to Edgar Lungu's press conference, or a press conference we may have dubbed as Edgar Lungu's press conference, because the entire two hours, Murumendo, you, Tarara Pari by Edgar, Aka in the HLM, Tamoni Ari by Edgar, where he said absolutely nothing. Instead, issued collaborative statements against JJ. The head of state issued instructions to have JJ, who is still in, in a hospital, to have him arrested again. What is the interest of the president to have JJ arrested? We sometimes tend to forget that he equally is a member of UPND, which is a prime suspect as named by the victim, JJ, himself. We demand that the two presidential advisors named to be behind the historical abduction of, their, of JJ to either resign from their post or ask to go under you know, um, investigation, order to have an independent investigation without any interference. Allow me to speak about evidence of hate speech, espionage, and proposing tribal war in UPND. After realizing that UPND does not stand a chance to retain power in 2026 due to harsh economic conditions they have imposed on Zambians, as well as HH's failure to fulfill his campaign promises, Ms. Aka Indechrema has now introduced new forms of political vengeance and historical impunity against influential opposition leaders and critical civil society activists. His main objective now is to defend power in, one, in a one-party framework by completely shrinking democratic and civic spaces or space by weaponizing the judiciary parliament, police, and other law enforcement agencies. As we speak, the UPND had, a, had done a staged brutal arrest of political victims 
of their own hate speech, proposing of pro tribal war and political religionism. We had Honorable Munia Zulu MP, Honorable Mabonga MP, Madam Edith Nawaki, President of FTD, Mr. Bredna Changala, political activist, charged, arrested, detained for hate speech and espionage. We had Dr. Dan Pule, CDP president, arrested and detained with the offense of proposing tribal war and hate speech. HH has also used the police to charge our two MPs from Eastern Province proposing tribal war. All these arrests were purely political persecution and divisive vengeance meant to undermine democracy and stage a one-party state in 2026. We have bigger and better evidence of tribalism, hate speech, and proposing of tribal war in Misaka in the as UPND itself than anyone else. And let me demonstrate it with facts. Most adult Zambians know that the introduction of Misaka in the on the political scene in 2006 was tribal and has remained so until now. HH became president of UPN in 2006 on the slogan of hate speech against other tribes in Zambia by preaching, only Tonga can succeed a Tonga with Axon Sejan. Mr. Natala, as lead tribal mobilizers, evidence is there. As a Tonga myself, Demutonga Memo, myself from the same village like President Aga in the I want to ask my fellow tribesmen, we cannot continue to pretend as though we are, cannot see that this deranged government is governizing its survival on tribal victimization. Let us not as decent people of southern province, our reputation from historical you know, evidence is that we are a generous, you know, forward-looking, accommodating tribe in Zambia. What the Tongas are known for is that before they even ask you your name, Baragupa Jibwantu, Baragupa Mabisi, Baragupa Ijagulia, Gotanga Kalansi, Gutu, Uvandi Hanyi. These politics that Mr. Haka in the HNMA is practicing is denting all of us, all of us who are innocent. The first people to rise against this tribalism should be us who speak the same tribe, the same language and tribe like Mr. Haka in the HNMA. Because what he's doing is unfair. It is denting our reputation. Zambia is Zambia today because of the contribution of the Tonga-speaking people. We had the likes of Mainza Chona, you know, Hari Mwangan Kumbula, his son Bodwin Kumbula. We had the, the likes of Venon Mwanga, who still alive, who rose above tribal sentiments, contributed to this country for it to attain its independence and progress because they were objective and they were patriots. In 2006, Mr. Sejan and Mr. Natala and others have never apologized since 2006 to Zambians for anointing HH as UPN did uh, using tribalism and hate speech. In fact, HH himself has never apologized to about this UPN policy of political tribalism and hate speech. The people of Kafiwa are still traumatized by ethnic, ethnic and tribal campaigns messages of one Bumba Malambo where she preached and appealed to Tongas to only vote for a Tonga president and Tonga candidates across the board. Up to today, she is actually council chairpersons and they are very proud of her. We have Honorable Charles Milupi, Honorable Douglas Siakarima, who are all culprits of hate speech and proposition of tribal war. We have the signature of hate speech and proposition of tribal war from UPND, and Mr. Akainde himself, Mr. Batuke Menda, the UPND SG, declared openly that the Lusaka Catholic Archbishop, Alec Banda, is Lucifer of Zambia. A direct hate speech against senior clergy 
and the, the Banda clan in Zambia, Malawi, and Mozambique, where the Archbishop comes from, as well as the Catholic Church, both the SG and or UPND President Misaka and Echrema have never apologized to Bishop Eric Banda and the Catholic Church. Never. In the southern province, we have Philip Musele, Trevor Mwinde, who declared that they will make southern province a no-go area for northerners and easterners politically. This is a direct proposition of tribal and regional war as well as head speech. UPN leaders enjoy and are free to practice because HS defines hate speech and proposition of tribal war from the lenses of his political enemies only. Come on, Sonny. And this biased and selective definition of hate speech and proposition of tribal war is the script Jack Mwimbu has given Zambian police to use for now. Mr. Aka in the HLM himself is a champion of his speech and proposition of tribal war. He's on record in videos while in Choma asking the people of Southern Province to vote for him again in 2026 and that they should not forget that the Tonga speaking people were being beaten once they were spoke Tonga at Intercity bus station. Hence they should not vote for their they should vote for their own. In that speech in Southern Province. HH was pro sowing a sea, bad seed of hate speech, regional division, as well as proposing tribal war himself. Is it true that people, because they were Tonga, they were beaten at Intercity? It's not true. We all went to Intercity. There could have been a misconduct of political cadres, but never were people mistreated on the basis of the language they speak. That's a misrepresentation. Today we have a president who openly preaches uh, against our historical values and identity, one Zambia, one nation. I want to make it clear. Hate speech in Zambia is a definition of Misaka and Echrema. From HH, for HH, and meant to punish HH's arch enemies only. The main culprit of hate speech and proposition of tribal war are uh, in UPND than anywhere else I have ever, as I have demonstrated. Honorable Cornelius Muetua, chief government spokesman person, is one of the big culprits from what he has said himself about tribalism and political division, dividing regions. Here, I am a Tonga from Monze. I will never support tribalism, even if it's from my brother H.H. H. himself. This agenda is what even brought him to become UPND president. People have visited me, admonished me, saying, why are you fighting your brother? For, so for them, <laughs> so as long as H.H. H. is president, then all Tongas, even if they don't believe in his leadership, they must just count in and support him. That kind of thinking is a cake is retrogressive and can never help the country move forward. This is wrong political seed HH is sowing in Zambia today. We are one, we are one tribe and indeed political parties can commit hate speech, hate speech or propose tribal war but they are left free. That's what is happening with UPND. This is wrong and must be condemned by all well-meaning citizens. Number three, continued political persecution, harassment, and violence against six Republican President Dr. Edgar Chagorungu. We are closely monitoring a crusade of hate speech against a former president by being championed by H.H., Honorable Cornelius Mwetwa, and others, and many others as if becoming as if coming back into active politics is now a crime in Zambia. If P, as PF, we are monitoring all political insults and threats of violence to kill and slaughter President Lungu, as it has been pronounced by UPND members and is close 
and close, um, of course, threatening also his close associates. This is on record, and we are documenting all those speeches from our end. When they say ECL and your associates will be slaughtered, we instantly file for documentation. Once again, I want you to know that as PF, we are documenting everything. Unfortunately, Mr. Aka Ichirema is enjoying the UPND language of killing and fixing President Lunga and his associates. The Republican president is happy to hear UPND youths from northwestern province insulting former president and prom prom promising to kill and slaughter him. How many times are you going to summon the six family to DEC and other law enforcement agencies? Why are you trying to imply to treat President Lungu and family as though having property is a crime in Zambia? And which properties? Tikazimvira kona nsoni, katu nsoni. Shua, a former president in Gatavia Galoj. A former president can't have flats, one set of flats. Even if it's poverty mentality, surely. Can we stoop so low? Let's be ashamed. Other countries are laughing at us. How that we want to inculcate a culture where none of the Zambians should own anything. But in this case, we have two classes of citizens. Those who sympathize with UPND can have and own anything. Neri Muti, our speaker, started practicing law together with Edgar Chagalungu. She declared that she, own, she is worth millions of dollars. She has hotels, she has everything. Just practicing as a lawyer before she became speaker. Edgar, who even became president, doesn't even own what Neri Muti owns. Zambia. Cry, Mother Zambia. Is H.H. telling Zambia that it is fine for, like I said, Madam Neri Muti to have properties, including Hotel Wai Edgar, who was an MP, cabinet minister, president for seven years, to own nothing? Hmm. We know that UPND desires to smoke President Lungu from this life in order to secure 2026. And UPND officials have made the goal of eliminating Lungu very clear. Everywhere ECL goes, armed and violent UPND thugs show up brandishing weapons in huge numbers. We saw them at deck. We saw them in Mandevu when there was a rumor that he may attend a rally for Heritage Party. We saw them at Mateveto when there was a rumor that he may want to go and eat some traditional food in Thorn Park. <laughs> UPND have decided to enforce a house arrest order against the sixth Republican president. As the PF will not allow that. That will tell you we will not allow it. Just behave. Yesterday, President Edgar Lungu went to Kawe to mourn our beloved father and priest are in that area. And there was no incidents. There's no, nothing has been take away, taken away from Misaka in the HLM. Nothing, nothing has been taken away from UPND. Just let President Lungu move freely. You will be at peace. This desperation and fear you have of him which is leading you to make stupid decisions and sending police to look like crowns is not right. Just leave him. Actually, the more you ignore ECL, the better for you. That's just friendly advice. I'm continue. The police are good campaigners for Edgar Chagwalungu. And actually, we want them every day. Kambo batu jata, maina ya, ayagumbele. Mwa abe dema politics amu Zambia. Mwa abe dema politics amu Afrika. So, kujata, go to jata. Wene munia, eno bali hivide. Wene munia were just little boys who went to parliament. But because of the police, munia's name now is a big name in Zambia. Miss Aka in the Ichile, my congratulations for putting a machinery to campaign for patriotic front and Edgar Chagwalungu. So, Mr. Musamba, continue being our campaign manager. We are proud of your actions. 
We shall not allow anyone to forcefully hold the ECL at ransom. The victimization of the former family is unacceptable. Stop it. And I say again, stop it. Leave Madam Esther Lungo alone. It's not a crime to be married to a politician. It's not a crime to be married to a former president. Stop the harassment. If you want to deal with a fellow politician, Edgar Chagwalungu is there. He has declared to have come back in active politics and is ready to face your music just like you must be ready to face our music together with Edgar Chagwalungu. Let's finish each other on a political platform, not using law enforcement agencies. Mugando. Mugando. You can't be calling yourself Ndemujende, but you are peeing in your pants just because of hearing one name. Before I close, for and on behalf of the Patriotic Front, I want to make a strong and stern appeal to our diplomats in Zambia, the international community, especially the West, and defenders of democracy to take an interest in the political happenings in our country because democracy is speedily under threat and the lives of our people are equally under attack. To Patriotic Front, there is a great opportunity before us. Members of parliament, members of central committee, council chairpersons and mayors, councillors, provincial leaders, district leaders, constituents leaders, ward officials and branches and sections. This is the time for us to put aside the petty consideration towards one another and unite for the sake of this country, Zambia. Those who are in parliament, behave yourself. Let's all cooperate. Members of central committee, let's behave ourselves and let's all cooperate. All provincial officials and district officials you are called upon, let's behave and tow one line, and that is line is to rescue the Zambian people than to consider petty issues that preoccupy us in you know, dark corner conversations. Let's focus on what is important, to rescue the Zambian people in 2026. Any eruption in Zambia will be placed squarely on the shoulders of Mr. Akainde Chema, as it appears they have turned a blind eye because the alleged project is uh, status. God bless and thanks for listening. Patriotic Front Secretary General Novo Rafael Makachinda giving a very candid uh, presentation. At this point, members of the press, I uh, will ask those that have questions, and please let's restrict it to the topic at hand. The SJ talked about the abduction of uh, JJ Banda, uh, the evidence of hate speech in the UPND, and the harassment of uh, sixth Republican president, Dr. Edgar Tabalungu. Uh, can we have the questions, please? Do we have any questions? Or oh, the presentation was so candid that uh, everything is very clear and straightforward. Okay, so uh, if there is no questions from the members of the press, we take it everything was very clear. So I'd like to thank you most profoundly for uh, taking time off your very busy schedules to come and uh, attend to the press briefing by the Secretary General of the Patriotic Front here at the PF Secretariat. Um, on that note, uh, we have come to, to the end of uh, today's press briefing. Uh, after the cameras are off, please uh, remain behind and uh, we will do some housekeeping. Thank you so much indeed. God this is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.